Welcome back. So we're talking about the SVD and how we can use it to solve linear systems of equations AX equal to B. And now we're ready to talk about building linear regression models from data. So this is really exciting because regression models are uh, one of the best tools we have when we have measurement data to build predictive models that we can use for the future. And in some sense, I mean, linear regression is kind of the, the first step in lots of, uh, lots of approaches to learning. It's the first model you would try to build if you had data. Okay, so I'm gonna walk you through this uh, and we're gonna talk about how, how you would compute this and we're actually gonna run a couple of code examples on real data to play around with these regression models. Okay, so the idea here is that I might have some matrix A, and I'm going to draw it as a tall skinny matrix A, times a vector X would equal some output B. So A, X equals B. And what I, I do this in the uh, over-determined case because oftentimes that's what we have in modern data examples. So I want to I walk through like a very concrete example of what, what this regression model might be. Let's say that every row of this, every row equation is based on data from an individual human's medical history. Okay, so every, uh, every row is an individual person. Okay, this is, let's say this is my row. And every column of the A matrix are risk factors, like um, you might have age, weight, um, are you a smoker, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, age, weight, smoker, diet, so on and so forth. And maybe the B vector is your risk of heart disease. So this is the risk of heart disease. And what we would like to do is from a large data set where we actually follow maybe 10,000 people and we measure their, their risk factors and then we, we figure out did they actually get heart disease at some point in the future. So we actually have data for A and for B. We would want to learn a best fit model X for what combination of those factors describe best or predict best the future risk uh, of heart disease. Okay, so for example, in this case, you know, you have your age, your weight, uh, I'm not a smoker, et cetera, et cetera. I multiply that vector by X, which is my model to some extent. It's my model for how those risk factors translate into a probability or a risk of heart disease. Okay, uh, I'm, I'm massively oversimplifying here, but this is the basic idea of what we might wanna do based on real measurement data. So I, I would actually measure the A matrix and the B matrix. This might cost $50 million to go and do this uh, large, large cardiac study to measure all of these variables for 10,000 people. But once I had that, I'd wanna build the best possible model X so that in the future, if I have a new patient, I all, instead of having to compute their risk of heart disease, which might be very complicated, I don't wanna to wait to see if they get it, I just ask them a few questions, I multiply them by this X vector, and I get a number which is hopefully predictive uh, of their, their future risk of heart disease. So that, that's the idea. And again, this is something where we're gonna to want to solve. We're not gonna be able to find an X that exactly solves this model for every single person, because it's over-determined and noisy and messy, but we want to find the X that minimizes the error norm between AX and B. That gives us the best prediction of B given information in A. Okay, so that's how uh, we're using uh, least squares to solve these regression models. And I'm just going to draw some pictures here. We're going to code this up on some real data, um, so I'm not going to be too precise here. But let's say that I have my axes A and B. So B is the thing I want to predict. A is a measurement uh, that I get to use to predict B. And I'm just gonna draw this in the one dimensional case. So let's say I have a bunch of data that's scattered around and it looks like this. So if I asked you, does A predict B? You would say it looks pretty good. It looks roughly linear. There's pretty uh, low spread in this direction. And you could eyeball a best fit line like this where uh, B equals A times X, okay? And the X here that we want is the slope of this line. So we're gonna be solving for that X, for the slope of the best fit line using linear regression, least squares regression in one dimension, 
Okay. Now, what's really nice about this, and I'm going to walk you through how to do this, all of this regression generalizes to very high dimensional, very big data in this matrix system of equations. Instead of having one factor A that I'm using to predict B, I, maybe I have 100 factors A that I'm going to use to predict B. None of the math changes. Okay, so in general, I could have, you know, factor one and I could have factor two and factor three and four and five. And I could build this instead of a best fit line, I could find a best fit plane that models B as a function of these input factors, the columns of my A matrix. Okay, now for now, I'm going to keep it simple and I'm just going to uh, assume that I have one factor A and I'm going to try to predict B using that one factor. And usually, my data is going to come in the form of pairs of measurements A for person 1 and B for person 1, A for person 2 and B for person 2, and so on and so forth. And I'm going to have a lot of these measurements, and I'm going to stack them into these tall vectors of data. This is actually the data I'm going to get is like, let's say this is A1, B1 for person 1, and this is A2, B2 for person two, and so on and so forth. Every person is a dot on this uh, on this the scatter plot, and I'm going to arrange them like this, and then I'm going to try to find the best fit slope x that maps A into B. And what's nice is that this is going to generalize so that if we have multiple factors, you know, multi a vector of measurements for person one, person two, person three, we can find the best fit slope uh, x that models B. Okay. Good. And so in one dimensions, this is quite simple. Um, essentially, in, in one dimension, what we have, if I just compute the SVD of this A matrix, because that's how I'm going to pseudo inverse, I'm going to get U equals my A vector divided by its norm, A divided by its norm. I'm going to have sigma equals just the norm of A. And because this is a one-dimensional uh, matrix, it has just one column, the V matrix is going to be trivial. It's just going to be one. So V is going to equal one. And it's really easy to compute the pseudo-inverse of this to solve for X using this formula here. And I'm just going to write out what the answer is. The best fit X, X tilde, that best fits um, this, this slope of this line is equal to a transpose B, so the inner product of my A vector and my B vector, divided by the norm of A squared. Okay, that is my best fit slope. Uh, and it kind of makes sense, right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to basically take B, all of the B data, and project it into the direction of A. That's what this is. And then I'm going to normalize that A vector by its length, and I'm going to normalize the B vector by its length uh, because I'm going to multiply that slope by A to get B. Okay, so this is the best fit line. It's exactly what you would get if you plug these values into this pseudo inverse um, in this formula here. But this formula generalizes to much higher dimensional data where there are multiple risk factors and you want to build models. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, now, the last thing I'm going to point out is that in um, in data analysis, often you have outliers. So this, what I've drawn, there's some variability. Maybe there's some, some Gaussian noise on top of this, this line because every person has a little bit of variability. There's not a perfect model for all people. But if I have a massive outlier down here, someone just was completely different than everyone else, what that's normally going to do is it's going to completely bias my distribution, my, my best fit slope, because it's trying to minimize the sum of the squares of the errors of all of these points to the line. And at this point is really far away, then the square of that distance is much bigger than the square of all of these distances, and it's going to pull the whole distribution down. So this is uh, the risk we have when we have outliers or corruption in the data. And so regular least squares, based on the SVD, can handle white noise really, really well. Okay, so if there's some Gaussian distributed data, you're going to find the best slope. But if there are a few big outliers, then this is actually going to be very, very sensitive to those outliers. 
And so this is going to motivate a lot of what we're going to talk about in chapter three of our book on robust statistics, compressed sensing, sparsity. And there are robust variants of this. So we're going to find robust fits where we add an L1 penalty term to kind of discount outliers. OK, so we'll talk a lot about that in chapter three. Uh, I just wanted to point out now that that is a risk of these outliers. But if you have relatively clean data or it only has kind of Gaussian noise or Gaussian distribution, then this is actually going to be optimal for, for fitting your data is the singular value decomposition. Uh, and this all follows section um, 1.4 in the book, everything here. And the next uh, videos, we're going to code up some examples of this to show you how to actually fit these things to show you what happens when you have outliers or multiple factors. Okay, thank you.